Hello everyone and welcome to another controversial card topic. The question of today is, what was the most influential or important car of all time? And as you can imagine, this is a very hard question to answer, because how do you define influence and importance? Do you look at how many times the car was sold, its industrial impact or cultural impact, how much it was ahead of its time or how long it lasted on the road? As you can see, there are many ways to determine what is the most important car of all time. And that's also the point of this video. I'd love to see your take on it. But before you write it down in the comments, allow me to express my views. As always, there are no right or wrong answers, unless you say Volkswagen Beetle. Then... I don't know. And subscribe immediately? Yeah, that's right. Fight me. But in order to make the final choice, I guess what will help in making that decision is to look at what were the most influential cars of the past decades. So what I'm going to do is look at each decade from the last century until the present day and name one car for each decade what I regard is the most important or influential, based on whatever reason and general consideration. Don't worry, I'm going to contradict myself a lot here. It's going to be interesting, as I have some pretty clear ideas about some decades, and I think most people will agree, but other decades? Hmm... The first decade or time frame is anything before 1910. I can be pretty straightforward about this choice, it just has to be the car that started it all. The Benz Patent Motorwagen. The motorized carriage that is often seen as the very first car. Some will debate this, when you say the Benz car, they will say that there have been similar contraptions made well before that, that could be argued as being the very first car, but that's besides the point. Whether this car was the first or not ignores the fact that this car pretty much started the whole car building business. In a matter of 10 years, loads of people went to work in their home garage to make a better version of what is a self-propelled vehicle, and I don't think they would have gotten that idea if they didn't read the papers and read that there was a German out there that created this machine. The 1910s is a time when car business exploded. There were so many brands that claimed they implemented another technological advancement in their cars, only for the brands to disappear as soon as they were founded. But there was one car that stood above all of them. Yep, it's the Ford Model T. Although the car was released in 1908, you cannot deny that this car is the face of the 1910s. It's the car that introduced the entire world to basic motoring, shifting the image of the automobile from a toy for the rich to an every man's means of transportation. It's the first car to be mass produced in great numbers, the first car to be sold in almost every part of the world, and it's the first car to be sold in great numbers. It influenced general society, the automotive industry, and even the way we design the world around us today. As much as I have a pretty clear view of the 1910s, the 1920s is a bit difficult. It's that time between the Ford Model T and the 1930s with the advent of aerodynamic styling. The 1920s were a period of rapid technological innovation, but cars still look pretty much the same as they did at the turn of the century. I find it very difficult to name one car that stands out the most during this time. I think I have one, but I'm not entirely content with my choice. But it's the British Austin 7, released in 1923. The 7 is pretty much the British version of the Model T, but even smaller and more affordable. The car was a huge hit in the home market, but found its way across the world through the last days of the British Empire. I nominate this car because it also laid the foundation for a bunch of other legendary car companies. Both BMW and Nissan built their first car based on a licensed version of the Austin 7. As mentioned briefly, the 1930s saw an industry-wide shift from carriage-like automobiles to more sleek appearance, by experimenting with aerodynamic designs and layouts. There were quite a few cars out there that contributed to this movement, or were otherwise ahead of their time. Two cars that come to mind are the American Chrysler Airflow and the Czechoslovakian Tatra 77. Between these two cars, I have to give it to the Tatra. The 77 was released in 1935, and 
and although not many of these cars were made, they were extremely ahead of their time in many aspects. One of these aspects is the radical and very streamlined design. It looked like nothing else on the road, and had a drag coefficient which is still very respectable by today's standards. And on top of that, quite a few design choices that were futuristic, like a lightweight rear-mounted engine made out of magnesium, fully independent suspension all around, overhead valves, and rear swing axle. Its design and appearance would inspire many cars in the years to come. Ah, the 1940s, a decade that was dominated by the Second World War. In reaction to that, many car industries across the world were shut down and converted to make war material, like tanks and airplanes. So it probably won't come as a surprise when I say that the most important car of this decade is a war machine. The Jeep. I mean, come on. If there is one car that everyone recognizes and is arguably the poster car of the Second World War, it's the Jeep. There were some more countries out there that developed their own all-terrain vehicle, but none were as quite as successful as the 1941 Willys MB, or Ford GPW, better known as the Jeep. The car was everywhere during the war, led to an entirely new car company after the war, inspired many other military vehicles, and is still a common sight on vintage military shows and parades. In general, the 1950s can be seen as the golden age of the automobile, when most of the world experienced the post-war economic boom that led to mass adoption of the automobile. In this decade, much of the tech that was invented during the war found its way into automobiles. Some cars were more futuristic than others in their appearance, but if I have to elect one car that was truly revolutionary underneath, it has to be the 1955 Citroën DS. Imagine, a company making a car far too long that it looks horribly outdated in the 1950s, and the next day drops this beauty. It's like the company jumped four decades in car development. Imagine the public reaction seeing a car that looks like it came from the future, and actually was from the future. The DS is revolutionary in many ways, introducing numerous technological innovations that would later be adopted by the general car industry. The car rode on radial tires, had power steering, was front-engined and front-wheel drive, was the first mass-produced car to have disc brakes all around, eventually had turning headlights and of course the car's main party trick, the self-leveling hydropneumatic suspension, resulting in an unchallenged level of comfort and ride quality. The 1960s saw the widespread adoption of the car, and with that, car culture emerged. You could distinguish yourself from the rest by the type of car that you drove. Now, initially, I wanted to elect the Ford Mustang as THE car of the 1960s, and I think many will agree. And although the car is a success and found many admirers worldwide, it mostly had success in the United States. So I decided to elect a car with an even more worldwide presence the Volkswagen Beetle. And I hate that I chose this car. Why? Well, I try to keep my emotions out of it, but I just don't like Volkswagen Beetles. They are not particularly interesting and they are not particularly special. And yet, they managed to conquer the post-war world in the same way the Ford Model T did. I once made a series of episodes about the history of the car industry of certain countries, and whenever I read about it, the Beetle would be mentioned somewhere. The car had such a cultural impact in so many countries, for many it was the very first car. It spawned so many automotive subcultures and was part of larger overall subcultures. It's a car from the 1930s with the design and characteristic of the 1930s, but rose to prominence in the 1960s. The 1970s saw the introduction and industry-wide adoption of safety measurements, emission controls and fuel efficiency. Cars had to be safer, pollute less and quit their fuel addiction. Many new innovations regarding these changes were introduced. Think of the adoption of seat belts and airbags, but also new engine technology lowering fuel consumption. To name one car that combined all these things the best is impossible. And yet there was one country in particular that really showed how to handle it all. Japan. 
The 1970s are the rise of Japan, selling more and more cars in the rest of the world. So I think I'm going to head in that direction and elect a Toyota Corolla as the car of the decade. Although I must admit I can't really think of anything more concrete until some of you will point it out in the comments and I'll go like, ah, yeah, that car, right. It's one of the many Japanese models that eventually turned out to be legendary. The Corolla combines efficiency and value for money in such a way that eventually became the best-selling car worldwide, surpassing the Volkswagen Beetle. Today, over 50 million Corollas have been sold. One notable development in the car industry of the 1980s is the adoption of aerodynamic design for the second time. Cars lost their hard edges and embraced soft lines and curves by the end of the decade. And among the first cars to introduce this styling are the American Ford Taurus and the European Audi 100. And yet, I'm not going to elect any of these two cars, but go with something else. Something that defined the 1980s all over the world, and it's a new type of car, the minivan. The minivan, or MPV, is a body style that replaced the aging station wagon and paved the way for similar body styles like the crossover and the SUV. Two cars are often seen as the inventors of the minivan, the American Dodge Caravan and the European Renault Espace. And this time I have to give it to the Americans, the Dodge Caravan. It was the car that introduced the United States to the minivan concept, with its modern front-wheel drive underpinnings. By the late 80s, the minivan was a common sight all over the world. If the 1980s was the decade of the minivan, the 1990s was the decade of the widespread introduction of the SUV. What used to be a bare-bone rock raider turned into a spacious jack-of-all-trades that was getting increasingly more luxurious and car-like. Although the SUV craze more or less started in the USA, it eventually extended all across the world, where the concept adapted to the local taste. There were already quite a few luxury SUVs driving around during the 1990s, but if there is one car that really pushed the craze forward is the American 1991 Ford Explorer. Somehow the Explorer paved the way for SUVs in the USA as a final replacement of the station wagon and even the then still popular minivan. But late 1990s you practically saw an Explorer on every street corner. Many car makers reacted by offering their own version of the SUV concept and so so the craze went on. The 2000s marks the timeline where new drivetrains made their debut, this time with a little help from electricity. The hybrid car conquers the automotive market, and the flagship of this new wave of cars is of course the Toyota Prius. or. If one car is a cultural icon of the green mobility movement of the 2000s, it's the Prius. Everyone wanted one, especially celebrities and movie stars, so that they could show the world that they were once again in touch with their environmental side. It was the Hummer versus the Prius, but the Prius alone carried the tree-hugging hybrid into mainstream adoption, and therefore gets my vote. We are three years into the new decade, and so it's time to already look back on the 2010s. And I think it doesn't come as a surprise that the 2010s is the decade of the mass adoption of electric cars, after being warmed up by the hybrid car. Now, guess which company contributed the most to this change? Right, you know what I'm gonna say? Tesla, with the Model S. Sure, the S came out right around the time others had released their first EVs. Think of the Nissan Leaf, think Renault Zoe, and BMW with the i3. But none of these had the crushing impact like Tesla had. Tesla presented a car that was just miles ahead of the competition in terms of electric architecture and software engineering. Say about these cars and the company all you want, but Tesla and the Model S single-handedly forced the entire global car industry to give electricity as a form of propulsion a second thought. And on top of that, managed to stay ahead of the competition much of the 2010s, and so it gets my vote as the car of the decade. Aha, now this one is rather risky. We have entered the fourth year of the Roaring Twenties, and we have another six years to go and to see what revolutionary cars come around. But if I were to already choose one car that is certainly important, well, this is it. 
Before you say I'm a fanboy, hold your horses. I don't like this one bit. I think it's a ridiculous car. I hate it. But when I saw the reveal of this car and parked next to a Ford F-150, you can perfectly see the F-150 is a car of its time. Its looks, lines, curves and design is a product of its time. Contemporary. And right next to it is a pickup that disregards everything about modern day design. This car is built to be misunderstood. Until the future, where we look back and think, huh, maybe it wasn't so weird after all. Or maybe it was. So here you have a list of all the cars mentioned in this video. These are the cars I think are the most important and most influential through the last century. Do you agree or disagree? Let me know in the comments. Let me know what cars you think should be on this list and why. And that brings us once again to this final question. What of all these cars is the most influential ever? I won't keep you waiting any longer because here is my final, rather unimaginative answer. The Ford Model T. I know, I know, how original. I'm not old enough to be around the time the Model T came out and experience firsthand what impact it had, but considering that many sources, documentaries and even my very own videos that often mention this car in order to tell a story simply shows the lasting influence this car had on society, the car industry and history. So to wrap it up, the Ford Model T, the most influential car of all time.